Trend carbohydrate intake improves performance. What are the two main physiological mechanisms why carbohydrate supplementation improves performance? Yeah, there, there are two main mechanisms that people suggest and one is kind of from the neck up and one is from the neck down. So first of all, just washing your mouth out with carbohydrate can light up the pleasure and reward centers in the brain and increase kind of your central nervous system stimulation and reduce fatigue and, and improve performance, um, especially in just one hour of exercise. Obviously during prolonged exercise, you're providing more energy and fuel to the muscles and uh, in that situation, it's another mechanism by providing that extra energy and fuel, you're able to push your body a little further and perform better. And the right amount and quality of carbohydrate intake is clearly very important for cyclists competing in the Tour de France. Um, what kind of carbohydrate strategy would you recommend for prolonged uh, cycling activities? Yeah, so my answer depends a little bit on the level of the cyclist, the intensity that they're going to be riding at, and the duration. And so for a high-level cyclist who's really pushing hard and going for three or four hours, there's no question that multi-transportable carbohydrates, so like glucose and fructose blends, uh, taking at high intake rates, you know, 80, 90, 100 grams an hour in that range, uh, is optimal for, for, for performance. If you're riding at a lower intensity or just over a few hours, then probably uh, more on the order of you know, 40 to 60 grams uh, per hour. Um, whether it's glucose or glucose or fructose probably doesn't matter as much. And we know that the gut can be trained uh, to maximize carbohydrate um, absorption and to minimize gastrointestinal problems. Um, what is the most practical way to find the sweet spot between maximizing um, carbohydrate intake and minimizing gastrointestinal problems? Yeah, so you've really you know, hit on a unique uh, concept where it's very individual. Every athlete's going to have that specific sweet spot uh, depending on their own gastrointestinal tract, but also the type of exercise they do, whether it's cycling or running or swimming, and also the heat or the temperature that they do that exercise in and the intensity. So. It's very important to practice that over and over again under uh, conditions that are going to mimic the race uh, situation and probably practice that at least you know, eight, nine, ten times in the uh, four to six weeks uh, before a major competition. Record what you, know, what you find and then you'll come into that competition with an individual plan that you're really confident in for yourself and, and you most likely optimize performance. And as a female athlete, do you need the same amount of carbohydrate during a race as you? No, that's a good question. So actually during racing and carbohydrate intake during exercise, it actually doesn't matter the size of the athlete or the sex of the athlete. Uh, small females have just as much ability to uh, deliver and oxidize carbohydrates as, say, large males. So those recommendation rates that I've given you are absolutely applicable um, to, to a female as well.